Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bismarck Baptist Church on December 26th. It's a unique kind of day today, the, the date, the, ho- the holiday. It's actually a holiday in certain parts of the country. It's called Boxing Day in Australia and in Great Britain and in Canada, where I went to school. I, I, I'd never heard of Boxing Day before, so I had to kind of figure out because it's, it's, it's a formal holiday. Traditionally, it's where the, uh, the master of the house gives gifts, a, a box of gifts to the servants. And then the servants, they go home and give boxes of gifts to their, their neighbors and their friends. Smaller gifts tend to be. But that's what Boxing Day is all about. In, in the United States, the 26th is when we take stuff back. If the stores are open, we take our stuff that doesn't fit, stuff we never wanted to begin with, we take it back or re-gift it or something like that. Uh, maybe today will be a little bit different. Maybe it's a day that in, the, in uh, just kind of an, an abbreviated service, we just spend a little time on the, on the weekend, Christmas weekend. We have a, just a time to be still and, and reflect and uh, direct our thoughts toward God. That's what our prayer is for you. One announcement, by the way, just so you're aware of, next Sunday, uh, January 2nd, 2022, uh, will be where we're getting together for next week. It's going to be, uh, our service will be over in the gym. It's going to be a, a brunch service, so we'll have uh, time together where we have a, about a half hour to sit at a table with, with our friends and family and maybe get to know some new people and have a little bit of a, a meal together. And then uh, an abbreviated service next Sunday as well. Just, it's more of a time for fellowshipping together, a little bit of worship, a little bit of teaching. It'll be worth your while. We hope you come back for that. If you want to help with that, we'd love for you to bring a few things. We're having, I think, uh, pancakes and sausage. That's going to be prepared for you. But if you want to help out by bringing some sort of pancake topping, could be a syrup or a, a, a fruit thing or a fruit salad, something like that to share. So fruit, some sort of topping, whipped cream, chocolate chips, something healthier than that, you can participate in, in doing that as well. We want to go into a time of worship. And uh, normally we would pray, I'd pray for you, and I'm doing that right now. But I want to give you an opportunity to have our opening prayer. So just where you're at at home or in your car, wherever you might be, I want to encourage you right now just to be still and focus, turn your thoughts toward God, ask him to to open your heart and the hearts of others to use this service, to have his way in you. All right, let's pray.
Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Church Online this morning. I'm so excited that you're here watching with us. If we haven't met yet, my name is Matt. I serve as the youth pastor here on staff at Bismarck Baptist. Today, I'm honored to give the message, and I want to talk today about where Jesus fits into your life. I want to take this step a, further, a step further, though. Right now, I want you to journey with me and ask, do I have room for Jesus? But not only that, where I fit Jesus into my life. A simple truth that I want you to realize right now is that Jesus, the Savior of the world, not only was born in a manger many, many years ago, but he's very relevant in our world today. Let's pray, and we'll get into some scripture. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for everyone that has chosen to get online and watch with us. Um, I pray that everyone just keeps you in remembrance through this holiday season. We know you're the reason. Um, many years ago, you sent down your son to live a perfect life and die on the cross for us, and there's no greater sacrifice. So we love you, we praise you, we know it's all for you. Amen. And so today, we're going to start with uh, a passage out of Luke, and it's chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So starting in 6, it says, And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. For some, we approach Christmas as a cute story, and we only really deal with that story at Christmas. For others, the story of Jesus is a great historical narrative. The truth that I want you to understand is that right now, not only is Jesus' birth a fact of history, but it's also highly significant in our lives today. So what do you do with Jesus? Here's my question from earlier. Where do you put Jesus? I personally grew up in a Christian household, but never really understood the love that Jesus had for me. Every time something bad happened in my life, I blamed it on God. And I saw Jesus in opposition to me. I remember in high school, I was playing football, and I tore out my ACL and MCL, and I blamed everything on God. It was all his fault. I asked what I did wrong. I wondered what I ever did to deserve what happened to me. Later in high school, I finally started to realize who Jesus was and the love he had for me. But still, he was just a mere visit in church every few months. I wasn't committed to him, and I wasn't living for him. I remember everything changed in college. Everything I knew growing up, I just let go of. I found myself partying and drinking every, every night. I found myself depressed and empty. I still remember one night in my do dorm room where the Holy Spirit showed up, and I remember I was just broken down into tears. I was crying and, and just could not control it. Um, and I was talking to God, and I was talking about my emptiness and where I had found myself at this season in life. And, and that moment, Jesus really changed my life as I started to commit my life to him. I left college, and I was ready to give all my plans to God. I was ready to go wherever I was called, and God had taken control of my life completely and changed it forever. I want to look at some biblical responses that Christ was viewed as from different people. So the first response would be a threat to be avoided. For some, the birth of Jesus is seen as a threat to them. That could be in opposition of their religion, or for me, it was every time something happened to me, I questioned if God was in opposition for me. I thought I did something wrong. I thought God was against me. But for one person in particular in the Bible, Jesus' birth was a threat to the position that he was in, a position of power. King Herod was a powerful ruler of the Jews at the time of the birth of Jesus. Herod liked his power. He was going to make sure everybody knew it. If you remember from the story, three wise men came to visit Herod, and they were asking where the new king was to be born. We'll get more into the wise men later, but I want to go over Herod's response first. In Matthew 2, verse 3, it says, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. The Bible records that the king was troubled by the news of the birth of the Savior. As you can imagine, he was rightfully bothered by the birth of a new king as it challenged his position of power. Herod sent wise men, the wise men, to scope out where Jesus was born and report back the news of his location. But the wise men were warned in a dream to not return to Herod, and that infuriated King Herod. Here is King Herod's response. Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 says, Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. He sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all in the region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he ascertained from the wise men. 
Herod was so threatened by Jesus and so infuriated that he was played by the wise men that he took out all his anger on Bethlehem. For Herod, Jesus' birth was a threat to his control and power. It was Jesus' very existence was to be avoided at all costs for King Herod. Herod had no room for Jesus. So that brings me to my second response, number two, a dutiful visit. Herod's response represents those who would be uncomfortable or threatened by Jesus. This response, which is the wise men, represents who would find Jesus' birth a bit worthy of their visit. Most Christians are content with a mere visit, at least to Jesus every once in a while. Maybe that's weekly or monthly. Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, starting in 9, says, After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When the star appeared, they were ready. They set off to pay homage to the new king. The wise men left everything for a period of time, weeks or months probably, to follow after the star. The wise men fit Jesus into their life, at least for a while. They were willing to sacrifice and worship. But we don't know much about them after this encounter with Jesus. What we do know is the wise men did not see Jesus as a threat, but they saw Jesus as someone worthy of worship. There are many Christians who attend church out of obligation or or duty. They feel like they may need to attend or are forced to attend for some reason. Beyond a duty and a pleasant visit, let's look at another response. Response number three would be a changed life. Let's go over Luke's account to pick up two other responses about the birth of Jesus. Another familiar encounter occurs between a group of shepherds keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel appeared to the group of shepherds who were minding their own business and watching their flocks as sheep at night. The shepherds were terrified, but they received word of a baby being born who is the Messiah. The angel told them that they will know that they're at the right house by seeing the baby who is wrapped in swaddling cloths. Here's the response of the shepherds hearing the news of Jesus' birth. Luke chapter 2, verse 15 starts, and it says, When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who had heard it wondered at the shepherds, at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen as it had been told to them. The shepherds' life were were changed because of a single encounter with Jesus. The Bible reveals that they returned, glorifying and praising God, which is proof that their lives were transformed. If we extend this encounter into our own context is how we can respond to Jesus, an appropriate response is the encounter brings transformative change. In this option, one cannot go back to the life that they were living. Their lives are changed forever because of the encounter they have with the Savior. In other words, we make Jesus a priority in our lives. We go to church and we devote our time to Jesus, not merely out of duty or obligation, but because we love our Savior. We'll spend time with God God often because we want to be with God. You can probably see the progress we've made here over the last three points, from a threat to a duty, to transformation. But there's one more that I want to talk about. And response number four is the life focus on Jesus. The final option for where we put Jesus comes by the way of Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph. Stop for a moment and begin to think of all the things that Mary and Joseph had to do for baby Jesus once he was born. Mary and Joseph fed Jesus. They changed Jesus. They cleaned up after Jesus. They rocked him to sleep. They soothed him. They even made faces to make him laugh, one I often use with my nieces, but that's just me. Dan even talked about last week about how Joseph changed all of his plans for Jesus. They did everything you can imagine a parent doing today to care for a baby. They were focused on Jesus. 
while Jesus is no longer an infant, we can take a cue from Mary and Joseph. We can focus and put it into practice in our own lives today. For us, focusing on Jesus means fully integrating him into our lives. More than making room for Jesus or fitting him in when we feel we need him or when it's convenient for us, we should focus on Jesus, giving him access and priority in every single part of our lives. So where do you put him? Let's go back to the original question. Where do you put Jesus in your life? I'm going to go over the responses that we had really quickly, and I want you to think about where you put Jesus. Is he a threat? Do you have no room for Jesus? Are you too busy? Does he challenge the way that you're living? Is he a one-time visit? Do you fit Jesus in? Is he an occasional visit? Does he change your plans? Are you a transformed life like the shepherds? Do you make priority time for Jesus? Is your life transformed by him? Or is your focus on Jesus? Jesus is fully integrated in every single part of your life. More than making room for Jesus or fitting him in, Jesus is the Lord of every part of your life. So where do you fall? What fits with you best? I want to encourage you today. Wherever you find yourself, take a step closer to Jesus today. I encourage you to have a greater dependence on him right now as you integrate Jesus more and more into your life. You see, I've seen every part of what we talked about in my life. I've seen the moment where I didn't trust Jesus. I thought God was against me. I've seen curiosity in my heart strike about God. I've seen a life transformed in my life when I gave my life to Christ. And I've seen my plans be given to God. And what I want to talk to you about now is the importance of giving all your plans to God, no matter where you are. You see, I've put so many things at the throne of my life. I've put partying, I've put football, I've put relationships, but none of them have ever loved me back. There's only one thing that I've put on the throne of my life that's loved me back, and that's God. So I want to encourage you today, whatever stage you're in, there's an option to take a step closer. And it's completely changed my life. I know it's completely changed others' lives. I'm sure they can speak on that. But wherever you are, there's always an option to take a step closer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. God, thank you for everybody listening. Father, I pray that we can just have a realization of where we're at and the areas that we need to give to you and the ways we need to come closer to you. God, I thank you that even though we turn our backs, you never turn your back on us. We love you. God, I pray that we can just focus on you through this holiday season. And even though Christmas is over, God, you're still so relevant. <clears throat> so we love you. We praise you. It's all in your name we pray. Amen. Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the wintry sky. Joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to for your love from great lights of glory you saw my story God you entered in and became one of us sing
light of the world Crowning a manger Born for the cross To suffer, to save High King of heaven Death is the born We are the richer By the price that he Thanks for being part of our service today. I hope it was meaningful for you and uh, just uh, look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Let me just give a, a blessing as we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be a light unto your life. Uh, may the Lord uh, make you aware of the invitation he's giving to you to draw closer to him today and then again tomorrow, the day after that. Bless you. Amen.